And so what should we do? We should seek to be a blessing to others. We should love the sinner who is our neighbor. Will we practice, as Rosaria Butterfield calls it, radically ordinary hospitality in a culture that mistrusts Christians? Why do they mistrust us? Why can't we get a hearing in the public square? Could it be perhaps that we need to, as believers in the church, repent of our sins and start loving like Jesus loved and seeking to bless others, to give dignity to the despised, and to honor, as it were, the evildoer with our presence, presence that is infused with gospel grace. Jesus comes to Zacchaeus' house, and Zacchaeus is saved. Jesus isn't stained by his sin. Jesus was willing to touch lepers. Jesus called Matthew, the tax collector, Levi, the tax collector, to be his disciple, and went, and Matthew, in receiving the call to be Jesus' disciple, invited all his friends to dinner. And the people grumbled because Jesus ate and drank with sinners. Put on the new self, a new self which is identified as renewed in knowledge after the image of its creator. And so what should we do? We should seek to be a blessing to others. We should love the sinner who is our neighbor, who is beside us, who is our coworker, who is whatever. Love them with the gospel love of Christ. But the final verses of our text in Colossians 3 have to do with speech. And that's where the final challenge of today lies. Because it is Sanctity of Human Life Sunday. And one of the reasons we as evangelical Reformed Christians observe this day is because we believe what the Bible says about the intrinsic not goodness, but the intrinsic worth of every human being from conception to death. And so we look for opportunities. We look for opportunities to speak up for the unborn because they have no voice for themselves. And to speak out against euthanasia because oftentimes those suffering from dementia or Alzheimer's won't be able to make those decisions themselves rightly. But we also must learn as Christians to speak to the sinner whose image has been distorted and disordered by sin. And so let's listen to the final verse, 12. Put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts. Does that characterize your interactions with people who are marching not in the march for life, but in a gay pride parade? Compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Do you see the attributes or characteristics of Christ who proclaims, I am gentle and lowly, Come to me, you who are weary and heavy laden. Do you see here the characteristics, the attributes of God himself, who proclaiming his glory to Moses said, I am the Lord, the Lord, slow to anger, abounding in steadfast mercy. Now, does your Facebook feed reflect that? Does the way that you look at people who look so different from you, who act so different from you, does it reflect that? Friends, this Sanctity of Human Life Sunday, let's understand that it is not only defensively that as Christians we must be active, but we must go on the offense, as it were. We must go out to 
those we would consider the enemy. We must get to know them because the Son of God, the Son of Man, came to seek and save the sinner, the lost. He didn't wait for them to come to Him. He went out and sought them. Will we do the same? The Sanctity of Human Life Sunday is an opportunity for us as believers in this congregation to examine our hearts, to allow the Holy Spirit to convict us, to turn in repentance and faith and walk in the ways of obedience.